Welcome to our review on corrosion. When we talk about corrosion, we're referring to the reaction of a metal with substances in its surroundings. If we consider silver, first of all, then silver doesn't react easily with oxygen. However, if hydrogen sulfide is present, then it will react with silver when oxygen and water are also present to make a substance called silver sulfide. Now, this is what you've probably seen. If you've got any random silver items kicking around at home, then they're the ones that go that tarnished color, the sort of blackish color you can see on the left. So the hydrogen sulfide is made by bacteria. And then when oxygen and water are also present in the vicinity of the silver, then it goes that tarnished color. What we find is there are very few metals that don't corrode. And in fact, the only metals that do not corrode are the very unreactive ones, which are things like gold and platinum. And these are the ones we tend to use in jewellery more often than not, because you don't really want to spend a fortune on a really nice ring, only to have it corrode within a few years. That would be rather sad times. One of the more common forms of corrosion that we talk about is rusting. When we talk about rust, we're actually talking about hydrated iron three oxide. So the only materials that can rust are those which contain iron. You can't say that an aluminium can is rusting because there's no iron, therefore it doesn't work. When we refer to rusting, we're talking about a redox reaction. And I've given you the word equation there for what's actually happening. We've got our iron and in the presence of oxygen and water, it forms hydrated iron three oxide. Now the downside about objects that are undergoing this rusting process is that those hydrated iron three oxide areas are liable to flaking. So that means that once you've got one patch of rust, the bit that's rusted flakes off, which exposes the unreacted metal underneath to the oxygen and the water. It will then rust and so on. A typical experiment you've probably done at some point in your time at school is a rusting investigation where you've put iron nails in test tubes with different conditions. So three of those conditions are given in the diagram there. On the far left, we've got a chemical called anhydrous calcium chloride, and that's going to remove any water from the air. So we've got air, but no water. The second tube is boiled water. So we have water, but no air in that one. And in the third tube, we have both air and water. So what you find through that experiment is that we only get the rust forming in tube three because we've got to have oxygen and water present for rusting to occur. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe the process of corrosion and you can describe the conditions that cause corrosion.